A big issue in last year's elections was abortion, and now Oregon lawmakers are working on a bill that would further protect the right to abortion in Oregon. It would also protect transgender people and their gender-affirming health care. House Bill 2002 would work to expand clinic infrastructure to provide more places in Oregon where people can get abortions and gender-affirming care. And it would expand legal protections for health care providers. It would protect them from losing their licenses for solely providing that kind of care. And it closes gaps in insurance coverage by requiring certain insurance providers to cover it. Supporters of the bill say many people in Oregon have to travel a long way to get their care. Three-fourths of Oregon counties do not have any abortion providers, and 20% of people trying to get an abortion had to travel long distances. For transgender people, 75% do not live near a health care provider who has openings within a month. And supporters say many people are unable to cover the cost of either abortion or their gender-affirming treatment significant barriers to the full spectrum of care still exist in our state uh, for many communities, including low-income Oregonians, those living outside the I-5 corridor, women, LGBTQ plus individuals, Black, Indigenous, people of color, immigrants, and people with disabilities. The outcomes uh, where we got is we heard about many of the worst fears um, from the day of the Dobbs decision coming true. A common theme was that the amount of fear that is out there from both patients and providers uh, and a fundamental principle guiding this work for us was that every person's life has its own unique circumstances, no matter where they live or who they are. Some, someone, any of us may need an abortion someday and people should have the right to make their own decisions on their health care. This makes our community safer, healthier and stronger. As a family physician, I know how important it is to guarantee every Oregonian's access to comprehensive, evidence-based health care and to protect those who provide that care. Reproductive and gender-affirming care are health care. Let me state that again. Reproductive and gender-affirming care are health care. They are not optional. They are not a choice. They are a fact of what people need, just like people need treatment for diabetes or high blood pressure. The vast majority of healthcare providers will tell you the same thing. Access to reproductive and gender affirming care keeps our bodies, minds, and communities safe and healthy. Many people have filed testimony against the bill. Some of them are concerned about the age that people would be allowed to seek out abortions or gender affirming care. Under Oregon law, people over 15 are allowed to get lots of medical care without their parents' consent. This law would not change that, but it would prevent providers from disclosing that information without the child's signed consent. What is overlooked is that decision-making capabilities vary depending on age and cognitive development. Children can certainly give assent to some concrete decisions, but decisions about ab with abstract implications for their health or their future should not be left to them without their parents or guardians' involvement. Now, we asked House Minority Leader Republican Representative Vicki Brees Iverson for response to this. Late today, she told us, I want to be clear, House Bill 2002 is an extreme partisan bill that puts parents' rights and the safety of our kids at risk. I'm disappointed after several assurances from the majority party to work together on Oregon's most pressing issues. This is now the issue at the forefront. House Bill 2002 is too extreme for Oregon.